Okay, well let's take a look at some of the muscles of the forearm. And what we're going to look at are the flexor muscles, which are in the front of the forearm, and the extensor muscles, which are in the back of the forearm. And of course, uh, we'll deal with a couple other supinator and pronator muscles as well. Uh, let's begin, actually, with the flexors, what I'm going to call the superficial flexor muscles. And the first one here is this one, right down the middle. It's the easy one to find. Uh, notice that it has its insertion at the plantar fascia. Its origin is at the medial epicondyle, and this muscle is the palmaris longus. So palmaris longus is actually a pretty easy muscle to find, even on a cadaver. Um, let's take a look at this model here, and I'm going to show you the palmaris longus. Now this is the tendon of the palmaris longus, and this is of course the plantar fascia that it actually inserts into. So this particular model of the hand does a good job illustrating the palmaris longus muscle. So that's a good starting point since it's an easy muscle to find. I'm going to show you this on myself too. I actually have a relatively good palmaris longus. See this one coming right down the middle like this? Not everybody has one. Most people do. Uh, I actually have one here. And it's, this, of course, is not the muscle. This is the tendon of palmaris longus. But again, you can appreciate how this is going right down the middle of the forearm, particularly the anterior forearm. All right, well, let's take a look, since this is palmaris longus, let's look at this muscle on the side, and that is flexor carpi ulnaris. Once again, the origin is going to be the medial epicondyle. The insertion is going to be down here uh, toward the little finger, and actually, I'm not going to be holding you responsible for these insertions because they can get a little bit complicated, but if, um, we'll probably give you a, a sort of a vague idea of most of the insertions, at least uh, for these muscles. All right, so that is, again, uh, the flexor carpi ulnaris. We go to the other side of palmaris longus, we see flexor carpi radialis. So this is flexor carpi radialis, again, starting at that medial epicondyle. Now, I'm going to look at some deeper muscles here. This is a nice deep muscle below the palmaris longus, and that muscle is flexor digitorum superficialis. This one flexes the little fingers. I should say the little fingers, the, the flexes the fingers. And um, you can appreciate, once again on this model, that the tendons of this muscle essentially terminate right here at this middle phalangeal joint of each finger. You can see this little V here, the tendon literally wraps around uh, that joint, that inner phalangeal joint there. Okay, good. The next muscle we're going to look at will have a tendon that actually goes beyond that to the distal phalanx of each finger, and that would be flexor digitorum profundus. So let's take a look at that on the other model. So. The way to do flexor digitorum profundus is to remove this superficial piece on our model. And here it is. You can appreciate how this is flexor digitorum profundus. And of course, this is one of the tendons of it. Um, not the entire area is flexor digitorum profundus. This one actually deals with the thumb, and we'll be looking at that one a little bit later on. But just this area right here. Okay? Good. All right, excellent. Um, while we're at it, let's take a look at some nerves. This actually is the ulnar nerve right here. And this, of course, is the median nerve. And you can appreciate how the median nerve is going to be splitting into several nerves that deal with the fingers, not the, the ulnar, however. The ulnar nerve uh, splits right about here, but the, the median nerve is pretty much for these three fingers, middle fingers. This is still the median nerve here. Um, Thumb side, if we look at the back side of the hand here, this would all be radial nerve. This is radial nerve. Okay? So, median nerve is for flexion, radial nerve is for extension, and we'll talk about these extensors fairly soon. And there's one more little muscle I want to show you, at least there's this little section, and that is the pronator muscle. The pronator teres is this muscle here. It is involved in the action of pronation. Once again, the uh, origin is the medial epicondyle, but is not considered a flexor, it is a pronator muscle. So pronator teres, teres meaning round like a hot dog, right, teres. Now, 
to get this sort of down as far as how you remember the most superficial ones, remember P, F, P, F. So pronator teres, the first P, flexor carpi radialis, pulmaris longus, and this one is, of course, the flexor carpi ulnaris. So P, F, P, F. Okay, let's go back to our pronator teres right here. This is the pronator teres. And now we're going to be looking at a supinator. To do that, I need to pull this off. And there is the supinator muscle. You can appreciate how pronator teres and the supinator form a V. The supinator has its origin on the lateral epicondyle, whereas the pronator teres has its origin on the medial epicondyle. Okay, now for the rest of this little segment, we're going to be talking about some extensor muscles. And so let's go ahead and put this back. And we'll start here. And actually, before we start with extensors, let's start, let's start with this flexor muscle. This is a muscle that starts just above the, the uh, lateral epicondyle and comes down to the um, styloid process of the radius. It is called the brachioradialis muscle. You can see that this is the brachialis muscle right here. So the brachialis muscle comes down and inserts in the uh, ulnar tuberosity. And if you follow the brachialis down here to the brachioradialis, you can see that one just sort of runs right into the other, right? So that's an easy way to find it. Incidentally, brachioradialis is sandwiched between biceps brachii and triceps brachii, so it's an easy muscle to find. It's involved in flexion of the elbow. All right, well now let's get to those extensor muscles I promised you. The reason we start with brachioradialis though is because it's a great landmark for the extensors. The first extensor we'll talk about is right next door, and it is extensor carpi radialis longus. Once again, it has the lateral epicondyle for its origin. And this muscle, um, of course, will go down to the wrist. Carpi tells us that, right? There's two of them, actually. One of them is short, one of them is long. And we talk about long and short muscles. We are really not talking about the muscle per se, but the tendon involved in the muscles. So long tendon with, with um, the extensor carpi radialis longus, short tendon for the next muscle over extensor carpi radialis brevis. And as you might guess, both of these are going to extend the wrist on the thumb side. If we go over here, this is extensor digitorum, and this extends all the fingers except for the thumb and the little finger. Extensor digitorum again has its origin on the lateral epicondyle. And then this little guy next to it is extensor digiti mini-me. This is the Dr. Evil muscle. This is the one that extends the little finger. And so if you remember Dr. Evil, and he had this little thing that he used to do, right? That was using extensor digiti mini me. So hopefully you'll remember uh, the Mike Myers films for that one. All right, great. Okay, let's go deck down. And we see this muscle right here. This is the extensor carpi ulnaris. Notice it is on the little finger side, right? Once again, the origin essentially the lateral epicondyle. And right next to it is a little muscle called the anconius which is again right next door to the triceps brachii. It's actually a synergist to the triceps brachii and then it helps to essentially uh, flex the elbow. Anconius. The term anconius means elbow. 